In part two of this episode, we look at more models that demonstrate the 110 planes. First, we have the 110 plane of the sodium chloride structure. Recall that we can think of this structure as sodium in an SEC arrangement. So the sodiums here are the red spheres, the chlorine, the blue spheres, in all of the octahedral holes. We notice again that the 110 face has a rectangular arrangement, whereas the 100 face had a square arrangement. For both faces of sodium chloride, two different elements are present at the surface. Another feature of this model is that we can break the model open, kind of turn around this way, and we can see that we can emulate the mirror plane that in this case is going through sodium atoms. Here we have the 110 face of the rhenium trioxide structure, ReO3. You can see again the rectangular arrangement of the 110 face. Now you can compare this by putting it sort of side by side with models of the 100 face. And recall that we have the rhenium is at the vertices, so that's the dark brown. And at the midpoint of each of the edges, we have the oxygen atoms. So there's three of those for every one of the rhenium atoms. Now to see how these two particular structures are related, what we can do is lay the 110 phase on its side. There we go. And now we can superimpose the 100 phase on top of it. So here we can see a similar arrangement of rhenium, oxygen, and then rhenium along this diagonal. So this is the 100 edge of the rhenium trioxide, and it's turned into a diagonal along here. So we can see that all the atoms will line up, and if we turn it around a little further, this we can see it even more completely we can set it up that way and we can really see that the arrangement of the atoms is identical in both cases the only difference is the exposed plane that is visible in the design of the particular model there's one additional feature of the 110 models which I like to point out is that as a unique accident, each of these particular models actually includes a total of two unit cells. And the way we can see that is as follows. If we arrange this this way, we can see that I can stick a half of a unit cell here, half of a unit cell there, and then so there's four half unit cells included here, so that gives us a total of two full unit cells. The other feature, which is slightly different, is compared to the design of the other models, we do have an atom in the center here. Instead of having a mirror plane in this particular case, we don't have it done that way, but we just have it as an individual piece that goes across. That includes the necessary atom to get the proper arrangement of all the atoms in the unit cell. The next structure that we want to look at is fluorite, the compound calcium fluorite. And we recall that fluorite consists of calcium in an FCC lattice. So we have the calciums are green, so it's calcium two plus ions. And then fluoride, F minus, is the light yellow color. And the uh, calcium is in a FCC arrangement and the fluoride ions are in all of the tetrahedral holes. Now, so this is the 
again, a reminder of the model of the 100 phase of fluorite. So for comparison, let's look at the 110. So here we have two models of the 110 phase of fluorite. So here we see again that we have a tetrahedral um, a rectangular arrangement of the 110 phase. And we can also see that now we have the fluorite are now at the surface as well as the uh, fluorides are at the surface just as well as the calcium. So now we have two different elements present at the surface. Another nice feature of this particular model of fluorite, it shows us that when we have an FCC lattice, it allows us to visualize exactly where all of the tetrahedral holes are going to be found in the 110 case. So we can see them as the pale yellow. This is the model of the 110 phase of a zinc blend, zinc sulfide. Here, the zinc plus two ions are gray, and the sulfide, the sulfur two minus ions, are yellow. And an important feature of zinc blend is that the sulfide ions are in half of the tetrahedral holes. So we can see we have atoms here and there, but absent in these two positions because we're only filling half of the tetrahedral holes and not all of them in zinc blend. Another feature of this model, similar to other models that we build, is that we have a mirror plane and we can model the mirror plane by breaking up the model in the center and we can see where we would find the mirror plane. We get a similar situation if we can stack them up to also get a greater appreciation for the three-dimensional structure, particularly as we combine uh, unit cells and we can get a nice picture of the 110 surface, the 110 plane for the zinc blend. Now we would like to look at the diamond structure. And recall that for diamond, we can think of it as a zinc blend structure where carbon is in both the zinc positions, the FCC lattice, and also in the sulfide positions, which are half of the tetrahedral holes. So here we can see, uh, here are the, the atoms that would have been from the FCC lattice, and then we see half of the tetrahedral holes are at the surface for the 110 phase. This particular phase structure is of particular importance because not only is the structure found for carbon, but also for silicon and germanium, which are incredibly important in semiconductor industry, as well as in catalysis. For episode 17, we will be looking at the molecular orbitals of both the tetrahedral and the octahedral complexes. So we're going to look at models of those particular molecular orbitals, and we're also going to derive them by a unique method called the KIM method. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. Have a good one.